my family, family, family. I've really been listening, rocking Kurt, Brother Curtis Mayfield, my ancestor. I want to say, I want to thank you, brother, for all the music. I've been on the Curtis Mayfield Jag for the last couple of days, and uh, it's artists that we need to hear in times like this because it lets you know the prophetic word um, of Yahweh, God, Allah, the Creator, whoever you call it, um, lets you know the prophetic magic. That's what I want to call it. Um, from the uh, prophets of song. Uh, and I don't want to put the musicians that use their artistry for work. I don't want to put them in the same field, in the same sphere as the one who got kicked out of the heavens because his music <laughs> was corrupt. Y'all get what I'm saying here? If you don't, you will. <sighs> but I was thinking about Curtis Mayfield. He's got that song, A New World Order. It's a brand new day. Hmm. And I don't think we really want to believe it. No. New World Order. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm saying that because whether it's a new world order or a one world order, however you want to serve it up, it's what it is. This particular craziness that's going on in Nigeria right now, You can close your eyes or put blindfolds on and pretty much wonder where you are. But you got a black country, and of course, you have black people killing black people. So, as y'all can see, it goes beyond color. This is what I'm trying to say it goes beyond color. However, however, it is what it is. I want to read this article from the New York Times, and it says, Why Nigeria is Erupting, according to the um, Times. It said, Africa's most populous country and biggest oil producer, listen to me now, and biggest oil producer has been convulsed by protests that started with anger over police brutality and have now broadened drawing worldwide attention. Tens of thousands of Nigerians have been demonstrating for weeks against a notoriously brutal and corrupt police agency, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, a show of popular Anger fueled by long-standing grievances over corruption and lack of accountability that posed the biggest challenge to the government in years. Close your eyes and see if you can see our flag flying. The demonstrations took a deadly turn this week as soldiers fired on crowds and protesters, inflaming Nigerians who were already concerned over about police and use of violence against the demonstrators in the first place. So I'm listening to this now. Here are the basics of what is behind the protests and what they could mean for Nigeria, which at 206 million people is Africa's most populous nation, its largest oil producer, and an epicenter of the continent's economic, political, and cultural trends. What is SARS? Well, SARS, commonly known as the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, 
It was created in 1984 in response to an epidemic of violent crimes, including robberies, carjackings, and kidnappings. While it was credited with having reduced brazen lawlessness in its initial years, police was later accused of um, evolving into the same problem that it had been designed to stop. A criminal enterprise that acts with impunity. Um, Reverend Nate Stampley from Milwaukee went over to Nigeria and he's taking a delegate all the time, like every summer. And um, my niece went, um, a couple other young people know we you know they sold items and stuff so they could go over to nigeria but one thing we noticed that right away i think it went to ghana too as well but we're not going there was that it was really really hard to do business because most of them the government it just seemed to be very accepting of criminal behavior. So we were told not to order anything that had to go to Nigeria, not to buy any products or anything or do business with any Nigerians. Hmm. Now I'm just saying, I want y'all to know this, because of the corruption in the government. Okay. But in June, Amnesty International issued a report that it said had documented at least 82 cases, at least 82 cases of torture, ill treatment, and extrajudicial executions by SARS officers between January 17th and May 2020. The victims, Amnesty said, were predominantly men. Were predominantly men. ages 18 through 25, from low-income backgrounds and vulnerable groups. The Nigerian government's failure to address this problem, Amnesty said, showed an absolute disregard for the international human rights law and our standards. Critics include Fulani Kwajafa, a former police commissioner who founded SARS. In an interview with the BBC, he disavowed what it had become, saying the unit had been turned into uh, a banditry. And they operating. Hmm. The, the, the catalyst seemed to be an October 3rd video that appeared to show an unprovoked killing of a man by a black-clad SARS officer in the town of Ugeli, a town of southern Delta State, in a southern Delta State. Nigerian officials said that in the video, which was widely shared over social media, was fake and arrested the person who took it, inciting even more danger. Demonstrations erupted in Lagos, the nation's biggest city and elsewhere around the country driven by the calls from people, many of them young, demanding that the government dismantle this group called SARS. Isn't that where uh, Hakeem Olajuwon is from? Nigeria. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, uh, the decentralized, decentralized movement has called Koskin, um, uh, what is it? The, the decentralized movement had escalated on social media where people using the hashtag in SARS and sharing images of police brutality. The hashtag has spread internationally with prominent actors and sports figures from across Africa to Europe and the United States sharing the post. President 
It said, has any has the government done anything to address the anger over SARS? President Muhammadu Buhari, seeing that the protests were serious and spreading, agreed on October 12th to disband SARS, calling his decision only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and the livelihood of our people. But, as Corey Holcomb would say, but, but the response did not mollify protesters, especially after Mr. Buhari's subordinates said SARS officers will be deployed elsewhere in Nigeria's police system. People who have been demanding that officers be fired and that the most brutal among them to be prosecuted say that the government attempt is an attempt to paper over a problem but not fix it. And in recent clashes between the protesters and the police, they have grown increasingly violent. What other issues are fueling the protests? Well, the anger of the protesters seemed to have only increased, especially after the deadly suppression of a peaceful demonstration in Lagos on Tuesday, compounded by a 24-hour curfew decree and the deployment of Nigeria's military forces to quell further demonstrations. One World Order brand new day. Come on, y'all. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. The powerful role in the protest played by young Nigerians and their use of social media to share grievances could turn the movement into a much broader crisis for the government. Half the country's population is under the age of 19. The protests have started to morph into a much larger critic about critique, I'm sorry, about Nigeria. Everything from police reform to security to extrajudicial killings, said Judge Devermont, director of the African program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. Fueled by young people and an outspoken Nigerian diaspora, Mr. Devermont, he said the movement had become a platform to talk about a host of things and a host of challenges. The movement bears a striking similarities to the demonstrations in the United States this year amid the outcry over police brutality after the killing of Joy Floyd in Minneapolis. It's all a freaking script. Report the news. But Mr. Devin Mont said an important difference is that the Nigerian protesters are not demanding the defunding of the police. If anything, he said, they want more resources devoted to helping improve policing in their country. They want more resources, um, said. There's a big difference, okay? Okay, they are saying police brutality cannot stand. And at the same time, they're saying that the police are underfunded and poorly equipped, he said. This is a systemic problem. To get better in Nigeria, we need better police. Only brutality isn't the only issue fueling the anti-government sentiment. Nigeria's stagnant economy, which relies heavily on oil exports, were crippled by the coronavirus pandemic and has become less of a major issue. I mean, excuse me, it has become a major issue. 
anger over suspected misuse of government funds during the pandemic has also become an element of popular anger. One, one case that received widespread publicity, the Bureau of Public Procurement data showed the health ministry has spent 96000 on 1000 ordinary face masks, about $53 each. Complaints about government corruption are a long-standing grievance. The country is regarded as highly vulnerable to corruption, ranking in the bottom fourth of an annual 180 country best to worst list by Transparency International. I know. Very, very um corrupt. Even before the pandemic upended life, Nigeria's people had a dim view of their politicians. See, this is what Donald Trump and them want to do. A Pew Research Center survey conducted a few years ago showed only 39% of the Nigerians were satisfied with how democracy was working. It don't work. Democracy is hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is democracy. Uh, while 60% said they, um, I mean, they asked that they thought elected officials care what ordinarily people think. Six out of 10 said that was not true in Nigeria. They said that people don't give a damn about them. So I want to keep an eye on this story because this um is 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 a tragedy. And what's going on there is not it's not isolated. It's all connected. And I just wish I could convince y'all, us all, that it is. All right. If you like what you hear, like, subscribe, share. I'll see you in the next video.